If you want to become a stronger hiker, you have to train your muscular endurance. Your muscular endurance is what allows your body to continually produce lots of force for long periods of time, like climbing a mountain or hiking all day. It's one of the most important adaptations to train if you want success in the mountains or on the trail. But like any other adaptation, to train muscular endurance, you need to exercise with intent and proper execution to get the specific results that you want. With that being said, here's what you need to know about muscular endurance training. Muscular endurance is your ability to utilize large amounts of strength for an extended period of time. It is repeated muscle contractions that occur with a high degree of force relative to your maximum output of force. What this means is that not all activities that involve of repeated movement will increase your muscular endurance as it's relative to your maximum output of force. For example, walking for 10 meters will take a relatively low amount of muscular effort, but squatting 100 kilograms for eight reps would take a lot more than that. Activities like walking or jogging involve repeated movement, but our muscles aren't being isolated enough through those movements to provoke a significant strength output. If you're an untrained individual, an activity like jogging may in fact provide a muscular endurance stimulus but for most trained individuals, you'll require a more advanced approach to training. Muscular endurance shouldn't be considered the same as aerobic endurance, which was the last adaptation that we covered. Although the two share the word endurance in their name, they aren't trained in the same manner. Muscular endurance training should be thought of as resistance training rather than endurance training, as you don't just want to spend large amounts of time completing repetitive movements, as this might take a long time. Endurance exercises and activities like jogging, running, cycling, and rock climbing all involve repeated and prolonged periods of movement, but they mainly rely on your metabolic processes to fuel movement rather than relying on your muscles to produce force. Instead, we want to put a specific tension on our muscle that provides the correct stimulus for the development of muscular endurance. As I mentioned before, muscular endurance training is like resistance training, and with any resistance training, you're exercising relative to your maximum output of force, which is the most force that you can produce for one given movement. But unlike strength training, we don't want to be exercising close to our one repetition max. For developing muscular endurance, we will want to target specific muscles and muscle groups that are responsible for our movement when hiking or climbing. As such, exercises that involve using the muscles of your legs will be best for hiking, and exercises that use the muscles of your back and arms will be the best for climbing, so long as they don't require too much strength output. Muscular endurance training requires that we single out the muscle fibers responsible for repeated and prolonged movement. These muscle fibers are known as type 1 or slow twitch. They are highly fatigue resistant and durable when placed under tension at a low force output. Muscles that house a large amount of type 1 muscle fibers include your calves, your forearms, and your abdomen. Every muscle in your body has some ratio of type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. Your genetics and training influences this ratio. Type 1 muscle fibers contain more mitochondria than type 2 muscle fibers, and can thus deal with the buildup of waste created through exercise more efficiently. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about, you probably should watch the previous episode I made on this series. So, to train muscular endurance, we need to isolate the relevant muscles and train them for high repetitions at a low intensity. What are the best ways to do this? The most hiking specific activity that you can do is weighted hill climbs. This will incorporate every muscle that you use while hiking because the two are essentially the same activity. The only difference is the tension placed on your muscles. You load up a rucksack with the right amount of weight to create excessive muscular fatigue in your legs by carrying it. That way you don't need to train all day to get the benefits, rather 60 minutes is all you need. The main two factors that you need to consider with weighted pack training are the weight of the pack and the incline that you're training on. You need to be carrying the right amount of weight to be creating muscular fatigue in your legs and you need to be walking uphill at a relatively steep incline, somewhere in the realm of 15 to 30 percent. Training the downhill is also extremely important, so using a gym machine like the Stairmaster isn't optimal as it neglects to train the muscles that you use when hiking downhill. The best way to train hill climbs is by finding the right place. Once you've found the right place, the rest becomes easy. So hunt down a suitable local trail, hill, or flight of stairs. But this isn't the only exercise that you should be doing. Activity specific exercises like weighted pack training are incredibly important to include in your training program, but you will need to include more generalized resistance training in your program to achieve achieve optimal results. Here are the exercises that I would do to increase hiking and climbing specific muscular endurance. For each of these exercises, we'll want to be staying in the realm of 8 to 30 repetitions, but realistically, you can do as many repetitions as you'd like so long as it's creating muscular endurance. But if you're like me, you don't have all day to spend in the gym, so 8 to 30 repetitions is the sweet spot. If you're at the beginning of your weight training journey, then perhaps body weight movements would be considerably difficult for you, like advanced movements such as the pull-up. I suggest for all of these exercises to find a variation or weight where you can do somewhere in the realm of 8 to 30 repetitions. Less than 8 and you aren't training endurance, and more than 30 and you likely aren't adding enough resistance. First we have lunges, a staple lower body movement, with lots of variations. 
You can do bodyweight lunges, walking lunges with dumbbells, or barbell lunges. Lunges are great for targeting your glutes and quads and can easily be adapted to suit your level of training. Make sure to take your time on the concentric movement, resisting as you lower your knee to the ground. Keep an upright and balanced posture throughout this movement. Next we have step ups, another popular exercise for hikers and mountaineers. The step up is very specific to hiking and hill climbing, and in a gym environment we can add the right amount of resistance to perfectly target muscular endurance for our lower body muscles. I'd choose to either do step ups or lunges as they target very similar muscles. While I prefer to train squats with a focus on strength, they can certainly be a great exercise for muscular endurance when performed with high volume. Sometimes I like to do a heavy squat during one session and lighter box squats during another to target both strength and muscular endurance. You could also do goblet squats or split squats depending on which variation works for you. Next we have calf raises, a must do exercise for every hiker. Calf raises are extremely important for developing muscular endurance in your calf, which is a key muscle responsible for uphill movement and using crampons. You should do two variations of the calf raise to target two muscles of the calf, straight leg raises and bent leg raises. Make sure to really take your time during this exercise to get full range of motion. Pull ups are another exercise I prefer to train for strength, but you can certainly perform high repetition sets of the pull up to develop overall muscular endurance of your back. Hanging leg raises are an exercise that puts lots of demand on your abdominal muscles. The leg raise in its numerous variations is an amazing exercise to train abdominal strength and endurance. It's important to remember to train movements involving your oblique muscles that are responsible for upper body stability. Doing a movement like the oblique twist is a great way to train your obliques and improve your balance whilst wearing a heavy pack. Hip flexor pulls are an exercise that specifically targets the hip flexor, which is a largely untrained yet extremely important muscle for hikers. Lay down on the ground and loop your foot through an attachment to a cable machine. Then, pull your knee up and outward to your elbow. Perform this exercise with relatively low weight as the muscle is likely to be weak. Romanian deadlifts are an amazing exercise to develop muscular endurance in your hamstrings and can also help to increase your flexibility when done to a full stretch. With muscular endurance training, as each exercise is isolating one or perhaps two separate muscles, you can train multiple exercises at a time in a circuit fashion, doing multiple exercises back to back. You can do this so long as there isn't interference between the two exercises that you're choosing. So, for example, if you do a set of squats and then follow it up with step ups, that isn't such a good idea as you've already trained your leg muscles. But, if you do a set of squats and then follow it up with a set of calf raises, there isn't much interference between those two. While muscular endurance is a critical aspect of any good hiking or mountaineering training program, it shouldn't be overemphasized. Muscular endurance workouts have a very long recovery time relative to other types of training. This is why you should only have one dedicated muscular endurance training session a week, as it'll give your body enough time to recover. You can also split your muscular endurance exercises across a week of training, doing perhaps one or two exercises at the end of your strength or aerobic sessions, and a weighted hill climb once a week. This is what I've done in the past, and this style of training has allowed me to complete two workouts a day without creating excessive fatigue during the final stages of a training program. The important takeaways are to avoid overtraining by doing too much muscular endurance exercises and to not let it take priority over your aerobic endurance. For the hiker or climber, muscular endurance is what is going to allow you to move faster over more difficult terrain. It might be the next step in your training that will take you to new heights. If you have any questions about this video or any of the other videos I made on training for hiking and mountaineering, make sure to leave a comment on this video and I'll try to address it for the last video in the series. But until then, I'm going to have to leave you because I've got some training to do. So I'll see you on the next one.